The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I am pleased to welcome Leah Redomoso, CEO of the Bilingual Child Care Educational Center, which will soon open in Matamidi. What separates this child care center from others in the community is that it will be dedicated as a Spanish Immersion Early Child Hood Learning Center. So thank you very much for joining me today on uh, Your Business Matters. And I want to start by just going in a little bit into uh, your business. Now I understand that this is not the first bilingual child care center that you've opened. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you for having me, first of all. Thank you for joining us. Um, we do have one center in Roseville. Okay. We've actually been open since 2010. We started in St. Paul, and in 2016, we moved into a building in uh -huh. Roseville. Um, and so we are now in the, at the point of opening our second center. Great. Now, and, and so you've been open since 2010. How many students do you have at the uh, location in Roseville? Well, we have capacity for 80 kids. Uh huh. And so we do part time schedules, so we have closer to probably around 90 kids overall. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, the, what made you decide to open up this center in Matamidi? Well, we um, are among a number of centers that do early childhood Spanish immersion, um, early learning. And the most of them are concentrated in the South Metro and in the Metro area. And so there is nothing in this area of the Metro um, that's offering what we do. And so we think that Matamidi, Stillwater, this area is a great location to bring this service um, to the community. Yeah, I didn't even know that there were other Spanish immersion uh, early child care centers uh, in the Twin Cities. Yeah, there are actually several. And in fact, Minnesota is um, a one, among one of the oldest that began elementary Spanish immersion with our Adams um, Spanish, right. Spanish yes, immersion. Right, yes, I didn't know that, and that's center. in the St. Paul School District. It is, and so yes. over time, those elementary centers have been popping up um, around the metro. So there's a number in like St. Louis Park and Hopkins and Spring Lake Park, and Roseville even has one now, a dual immersion. So I, and, and I would imagine that uh, with like the one in Adams in St. Paul, that even though you're a private entity and they're a public school, that there are students that maybe start out where you are that then end up maybe going to the Adams uh, Spanish Immersion Program. Absolutely. We really recommend that families consider continuing their pathway through one mm -hmm. of the elementary programs. Yep. Now, going to Matamidi, why is it important that kids or students or, or toddlers even start a new language program that early? I mean, why not 10th grade? Why not mm -hmm. high school? Why, why when somebody is one year old? Absolutely. Um, the reason is very simple. When we're that young, we learn language in a very natural and different way. Once we, I think the research shows, once kids are around seven, it's debatable, but mm -hmm. um, about seven to 10 years old, they already begin to mm -hmm. lose their natural learning ability for language. We begin as early as seven months, actually, to start distinguishing amongst the, the sounds that mm -hmm. we hear. Mm -hmm. And so the earlier you can be immersed in a language, the more naturally that is going to develop mm -hmm. for you. So we start with kids as early as six weeks and go up to preschool before kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And by the time they leave us, those children are speaking fluently. Mm -hmm. So it's a great, great opportunity to give your kids. Now, I know that, uh, I know that for example, there's a, an immersion program that is located up in the uh, Forest Lake area. Mm -hmm. And they have, I think, uh, Spanish immersion and Mandarin, Im Mandarin immersion that they offer. So, but this school is in Matamidi. 
So you've got a, um, if, if parents want to continue uh, with the Spanish immersion, they have to, um, they have to make those uh, connections maybe outside of the uh, uh, Matamita and White Bear school districts now. Is that correct? That's correct. Probably the closest uh, elementary program would be the one in Little Canada. Oh, there's one in Little yeah, Canada. Yeah, it's part I of the Roseville. The Roseville school system has uh, dual immersion. Spanish. Oh, Spanish immersion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, how about your background? Uh, you know, I mean, you're, this is, I, like I mentioned, this is the first I've ever heard of a preschool Spanish immersion program. All of the child care centers in the area here are all, they're not similar, but they, none of them have that immersion part in their uh, process. So what is your background uh, and why did you decide to go into this type of, of work? Yeah, uh, I actually was uh, born and raised in Minnesota. I grew up in Chisago Lakes area. And throughout high school, I was always interested in Spanish. I took Spanish in high school. We had an exchange student from Mexico. I went to um, do my undergrad at UW-Madison and studied abroad in Spain for a year. So um, I've always had an interest and a love of language and my, my, my study abroad experience in Spain really changed my life and um, showed me how your worldview just opens up when you learn another language mm -hmm. and become immersed in another culture. And so um, throughout my career, I actually worked in fund development and for lots of nonprofits, St. Paul Public Schools, um, both educational, social services, economic development. And I started this school because I have a daughter and I wanted her to have a Spanish immersion preschool experience. And there was nothing in St. Paul where I was living at the time. So mm -hmm. I started working with somebody who had a center. And um, long story short, I ended up opening up my own center uh, in 2010. And I've been able to, I have three children, so I have been able now to send both of my children, my mm -hmm. younger children, through our program. And it's, um, it's just been something that I've, I've loved yeah. in my life and wanted to share with other well, families. One, th one thing I always like to ask people that start a business like, like you did, um, you had a, you had a, you've got a family, and uh, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to start a business particularly something that is somewhat different. I mean, you didn't play it safe. No, I didn't. <laughs> and I actually started my business in the midst of the whole economic crash. In exactly, exactly. So. <laughs> so, so first of all, what were some of the challenges that you faced when you started your, uh, your, uh, your business venture? Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, uh, finding space that commercial space, being able to find a, a place where, that will be able to host uh, a, a child care center was, was difficult. We spent, I spent about two years trying mm -hmm. to develop a lease with the church that we started with. Um, and then uh, when we sort of outgrew that space, we uh, pursued all kinds of um, financing and we ended up working with an investor. So getting that space moving and growing and, and the mm -hmm. space is the biggest challenge. Did you did you know ahead of time that this was going to be a uh, a type of a child care center that would automatically attract people uh, that you were looking to attract? I mean, did you what what gave you the um, the the confidence mm -hmm. that doing this, which wasn't done in the uh, which wasn't being done, and in the heart of the recession? What gave you the confidence that this was actually going to attract the kind of students that you wanted? Mm -hmm. Well, I was very confident because there actually were a number of centers that were doing what I'm doing. Okay, And they All were right. very successful, always full. We had Adams uh, Spanish Immersion Elementary right, School that Paul. had yep. 700 kids and was busting at the seams. They had to, you know... Uh, in fact, limit down their, the grades they could accept at that location because they had so many kids that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty confident um, that there would be families who are looking for this kind of mm -hmm. experience. And, okay. and the earlier, the better. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what started, just yes. kind of a, a, a dream that you wanted to move in. And now you're, you're moving into uh, Matamidae. I know that this is your next venture. Are you, uh, are you, are you happy with uh, just having two schools? 
No. <laughs> oh, you're not, okay. We do have plans to continue to grow. Um, it's very important to me personally that we grow in a way that is quality. So I'm not at all rushing this process. We took, it's our, it's our ninth year and this is our second center. So we took mm -hmm. a lot of time to develop our program to make sure it was a quality program where NACI accredited um, and that we have really great staff. And so we, we spent a lot of time developing that you know, before we went to a second A lot center. of businesses, that's a mistake that they make. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll uh, get onto something that is really uh, unique and innovative and they expand too quickly mm -hmm. and they find that that causes problems. And you mentioned that you're looking at quality. Are there other venues or issues that you look at when you talk that we do want to expand, but um, these are things that we have to have in order to to expand our business? Um, other areas outside, I mean, quality is definitely the most important to me. Mm -hmm. And I think now we're in a good position to be able to replicate. Yep. So, um, you know, finding the right space, coming back to that mm -hmm. is really important because child care centers, it's difficult mm -hmm. space-wise. You need a gym, you need outdoor play area, you need lots of parking, you need um, space for classrooms, mm -hmm. obviously. So um, sprinkler systems, there's all kinds of things involved in the building side yeah. of it. So. Have you looked at all at, uh, you know, we talked a little earlier about Mattis, about the Adams School uh, mm -hmm. system in St. Paul, and you mentioned the, uh, the school in uh, Little Canada. And again, you're in, you're in Matamidi. Have you thought at all about um, making some kind of indirect connections with any other institutions so these students have a pathway mm -hmm. beyond uh, just pre-grade uh, pre school? And have you thought, when you look at expansion options, have you thought at all about going beyond uh, just uh, infants up to kindergarten? Yes, um, so there's a couple of questions there. Right, in terms yep. of working with the public schools, we have always reached out since we opened to the public schools to try to create tour opportunities so we could go with our families. Okay, and set so up you tour have done I, that. I have done that. Um, it's a little challenging working with public schools. I, I find them to be a little bit closed. I hate to right, offend yep, anybody, yep. but they kind of operate with really within their own sphere. And I think that's an area for a lot of opportunity in the future yeah. is to consider working with more closely with some of our, uh, some private people like myself who are very interested in sending our kids to their schools and, and to be more open about creating those pathways mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. coordination with maybe. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of the question, mm -hmm. have, you, have you thought at all about, uh, are, are you just going to stick with preschool or have you thought at all about the need to go beyond preschool? Well, actually, we used to run a summer program for school-age kids. Oh, you did? We did for the first four years, four years wow. ago. Wow, yeah. okay. So we had a really great summer program. We still have the program, but again, we ran up into this space issue. Uh -huh. So the way we did it in the past is we would um, connect with, we worked with um, SPA, St. Paul Academy. Yeah. That's where we offered our summer program for the, the majority of the years that we did it. And then it didn't be, it, some things happened internally for them that they couldn't host us anymore. And so we did it for a couple of summers at Central um, off of Lexington. Oh, um, Central High School in St. Paul. Not Central Paul. High School, the elementary school that's oh, there okay. uh, south of, okay. of 94. Yeah. So that was, that's been our challenge. We had hoped that when we moved into our new building, we could continue to offer that from our own building uh -huh. because we had traditionally seen dips during the summer where our enrollment would go down. Teachers, sure. people want to take summers off. Right. And we just didn't experience that in our new building. We were full during the summers. We didn't have This the is the one in Roseville. Yes, this is the one okay. in Roseville. So have you thought about that in maybe Matamidi? Is that a idea that you might want to float around? If, if the schools were open for it, I have a wonderful program that I could implement next summer. <laughs> uh, by the Ready. schools being open, you mean the modern media schools or the, what? Yeah, because the problem with using our own space is you really need a space that's just two or two or three months of the year. And okay. So, and having that within our own setting becomes a little challenging. Uh huh. Because if we fill it up with preschool kids during the school year, they're going to stay through the summer is what we're experiencing now. And so... To me, the public schools seem like a really mm -hmm. 
ideal fit again. And that would uh, be a collaborative space. effort. Yeah, then, that leasing you could space have for maybe them with, uh, mm -hmm. with the local uh, school district, yeah. either Montemedi or White Bear. Any, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're totally open to to that idea if if uh -huh. people are interested in in space sharing. Yeah, um, that's. I haven't been pursuing that lately because uh -huh. I've been pretty busy gotcha. kind okay. of uh, expanding now, our own operation. I want to get back a little bit too to, uh, to Montemita. You said you, you looked at a lot of other areas in the, uh, in the uh, area around here. And I know that um, you know, one of the things that keeps coming up is that Montemita does have a pretty good school district. I mm -hmm. mean, when you look at, at other uh, school districts that might be in the Twin Cities. And was that a consideration that you uh, looked at when uh, deciding to start your school in Montemita? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, it's to, to our advantage to, to go where there's a, a focus and a, on excellence and education. That's what we're about, uh -huh. too. So, um, we, and, and it's just a beautiful community. And that's important mm -hmm. for, yeah. for you in, in uh, setting up this, this program. Absolutely. And I think it's a, a very accessible location as well in terms of mm -hmm. other communities that are close yeah. by. People from Stillwater, Lake Elmo, probably travel 694 into the cities often. So yeah. we like to, we think it's very accessible yeah. for people from other communities as well. Yeah. Another, another thing that you mentioned that really caught my attention earlier in the interview is that uh, you said th something about part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the child care centers, uh, you, they have a pretty rigid system in place mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a child, they have to stay there for a certain number of hours a day, you know, and they, they don't fluctuate based on uh, needs or other th issues that may come up. And you mentioned that you uh, allow part-time students. Can mm -hmm. you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, um, not all families are looking for a full-time experience. Um, we recommend the full-time experience, Absolutely. of course, because we feel like that's where the greatest immersion is going to happen yep. when you're coming every day and there's other issues like separation and, and just yes. continuity in your schedule um, that are positive about coming full-time. But that's not for every family. And so we want to offer uh, mm -hmm. more choices for yeah. families. So the way we do it is we offer either a two-day or a three-day schedule so they can pick oh, up Oh, you either, do? Yeah, a Tuesday, Thursday, or a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh-huh, for mm -hmm. uh, uh, how many hours a day then? Well, we're open from 7.30 to 5.30. Okay. So we allow our parents to use the center um, th during those hours as mm -hmm. they wish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and finally I want to ask you um, a real basic question, but you really went through why your school is real unique, but are there any other things that you want to mention, like how, what, what would a typical day be for a, uh, a, a, a student maybe that's three years old, using that as an example, in your school? What would, what would the day be from the parent drops the, ki the, mm -hmm. the student off or the kid off to the time when they get picked up? Okay, I, I want to. I just realized I made a mistake. I said seven thirty to five. They were open seven to five thirty. Okay, sorry all about right, that. All right. <laughs> okay, so a typical day. We have a very set schedule every day because kids need lots of structure and routine mm -hmm. in their days. So um, we offer breakfast. We offer a full commercial kitchen. So we're doing all organic foods, or the majority oh, organic okay. foods, and we we try to do a more typically Hispanic foods menu. So we do okay. rice and beans and shredded chicken and um, tacos and soups. and So things that are a sure. little bit more traditional, but very healthy. So we'll start with breakfast. And then every morning, every class starts with circle time. It's like their group meeting time and everybody's checking in and singing yeah. some songs and getting ready for their day. And um, after that, we'll have a couple of hours where we do varied activities. So uh, through our curriculum, Everybody, we do about 15 minute activities and we mix in lots of choice time and free play time as well. Free play is really, really important for kids. Um, we do short activities that are sure. directed in science and social studies uh -huh. and culture and, and, and math and reading, et cetera, um, as well. But we do like to have lots of play time. So we also have two um, one hour blocks where they play outside on the playground. We have a yeah. beautiful natural playground. Sure. And then every day they have lunch. Two-hour mm -hmm. nap and a snack and more playtime in the afternoon. Great. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what is your, uh, what's the best way if they're interested in uh, pursuing further information about your school? Yeah, we have a website which really explains a lot about us. It's www.bilingualchildcare.com. 
Okay. And so on the, our website, we have a contact information. Uh, you can call us. There's a form you can fill out and email us, and mm -hmm. we'll get back to you if that's more convenient. Um, we have a lot of resources there to read up more information Great. about us. Um, and for those who are interested in starting with us in January, we are open in Roseville to give tours so you can learn about what Excellent. we're like. Wonderful. And we'll be doing some open house times in December and a period orientation in January too. Thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. On Tuesday, October 2nd, the White Bear Area Chamber will hold its annual Business Achievement Awards event at Keller Golf Course. This event recognizes business for their entrepreneurship, civic engagement, and business innovations. There is an award ceremony followed by a guest speaker. For more information, visit the Chamber's website, www.whitebearchamber.com. I'm Tom Snell. Thank you for watching Your Business Matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.